Took a little trip to the local thrift store, Salvation Army. So I have a little project planned today, and what I was looking for was uh, like a turkey roaster, a roaster oven, and I didn't want to pay full price because I'm just going to cover it with um, with bee wax and won't be able to use it for anything else. So I was looking for something cheap, and uh, a used one would be great. They had one, and it was $15, but it had a yellow sticker on it. 50% off day today. Man, $7.50 and now we're gonna go melt some beeswax. Made another stop. I'll show you what I got. I was looking for something like a like a wire brush, but not as aggressive. So I got this little guy made by Warner. And they're nylon, but they're really heavy duty. And then I got this one, which is a little bit bigger. I figured I can cut it right in half. Uh, right here, through here with a chop saw, and uh, I can use. I'm gonna use this to brush off the old cocoons. Now I'm gonna head to the house, but first I'm stopping for lunch. It's like almost one o'clock, and I got up at four in the morning this morning to go turkey hunting. I don't know if any of you uh, beekeepers go turkey hunting or not but I did and I had a pretty good day now I'm gonna go for some lunch so there's a local pizza shop here that sells uh, pizza by the slice and I'm thinking I'm thinking some chicken wing pizza slices sounds good to me so two slices and a drink and I think it's like seven bucks or something like that oh there goes the moped lunchtime lovely lunch date and we got a uh, couple slices of pepperoni and chicken wing hello everybody and welcome to hunter gatherer channel or the honey gatherer channel and today we're working on another bee project it's springtime and it's bee time so today we're going to start working on some uh, some of the frames this is one of uh, it's one of the old frames that I have and a lot of the frames are looking a little rough like this. Now this one, they probably would clean that up and draw it out, but I wanna scrape them down, clean them off, and I'm gonna re-wax them. And there's many different ways we can do it, and I'll talk about that in a little bit. But first, this is the bee area, and it's a mess. And when I was working on the swarms the other day, I was in here and I was grabbing lids from the very bottom of this pile of all the extra pieces. I have lids, um, inner, inner covers, uh, telescoping covers, and um, bottom, bottom boards, and all in this pile, but with no rhyme or reason. And then I have deeps and I have mediums in here. Some of them have frames, some of them don't have frames. No rhyme or reason, really. So I'm going to take all this out, stack them all over the shop, and pull all the frames out of them. And then I'm going to pop the plastic foundations out, and we're going to re-wax them, let it, let it cool and dry, pop them back in the frames, and put them back in boxes so they are ready to go. So first, time to pull everything out of here. Here's the game plan. I've got this here. Salvation Army $7.50 roaster oven. It's got this insert in it. We're not going to use that. I am going to plug this thing in. Turning it right up. I got it on 400. I'm going to put some water in the bottom here. A couple purposes. Main purpose is for it to help the wax melt. Other purpose is that the wax, once it melts, it'll float on top. Once I cool it down, the water will be underneath, kind of like you're rend rendering the wax and cleaning it up. Don't use your wife's or husband's, whoever's the main cook in the house, don't use their uh, roaster oven, their turkey roaster, because once the wax is on it, it's on to stay. So this is for bees only. 
and I have this here block of wax from rendering it a year or so ago and we're going to put this right in the wax or in the water and let it melt and instead of using a paintbrush and painting it on we're going to take this here we're going to go down underneath the wax and then we're going to pull it right up out and it'll be right now it's covered with water but it'll be covered with wax kind of shake them off a couple times and then we're going to set them i'm going to make a board with some screws in it so like a plate separator and we're going to set them right here standing up and we'll see how many we can get on a on a row maybe maybe make it for like 20 or 30 or so and then we'll put them back in the frames put those frames in the box and put them back but we've got a lot of work to do so I've got like close to 50 boxes to, to do times 10 frames. So 500 frames uh, to pull out. And the other thing is I got to make sure that the foundations are clean, fairly clean, before uh, I put them in the wax. So hopefully this isn't going to be like a four-day project but it needs to be done. So I'm gonna get this wax, which this is some, it wasn't completely uh, dry and solid when I put it in the bag and it broke out and uh, kind of like volcano, the lava came out and it, it made a little bit of a mess, but we'll get it all in here. And it's, whoo, it's heating up. I don't think I explained it, but this plastic foundation, it's great. It already has, um, okay, for people that are beekeepers or already know stuff about beekeeping, this is going to be kind of boring, but it already has cells pre-pressed into this plastic and the, the bees will draw off of those cells and make the uh, honeycomb. And the thing with this is that it's plastic and bees normally won't draw out comb on plastic if it's just straight plastic they won't they don't really want to mess with it i have many times put brand new frames into a box and the bees were reluctant to draw it out so with me covering this with wax now most of these frames come with just a really super thin film of wax on them and sometimes they'll draw them out and sometimes they won't and when they're shipped, if they're hot, the wax can melt and it could be like they draw it out on the bottom where the most wax is and not on the top and things like that. So the plan is, and the reason I'm doing this, is to really give them a nice covering of wax. It'll really give them a good head start and they'll want, they'll want to draw this out better. And all the, the swarms that I've captured and the other stuff that I, I've got going on out there, those bees are going to have to really work hard to draw out to be ready by the time it's time for honey. So by giving them a nice thick coat of, of wax on here, that's going to help them draw out faster. They won't have to use the nectar that they're bringing in to create wax and use it up for energy. They'll be able to build off the wax that I've put on here already, and they'll be able to build it up really quick, and they'll be able to use that nectar to make honey instead of making wax. So most of the time when you get frames, no matter where you buy them from, there'll be a tiny bit of wax on. And it's almost always better for you to go ahead and put more wax on it because it's just going to give them that much more of a head start. So I'm going to get this wax put in here. Okay, that's that. Let that cook for a little bit. I got all the boxes that had frames out. These boxes are empty. They're, they're new, well, except for the top two, and that one's got a big broken piece out of it, so that's kind of my emergency box. Probably could just take that side off and put a new side on it, but anyway, this is tops, bottom boards, uh, telescoping covers, and inner covers, and, well, one other box there. And then there's a bunch of, these are some frames from Dad's house that were just kind of tied together we got from somebody and just a little bit of other stuff. So we need to get that all cleared out of there too. This is all 
of the frames that need to be taken apart and scraped and cleaned and waxed and put back together. I'm going to clean that area out, vacuum it pretty good with a shop vac and make sure it's clean. The empty boxes, I might just, I gotta figure, I'm gonna figure it all out. But I'm gonna put supers, the, the mediums in one spot and all the, the deeps in another area. That way I'm ready to go. These boxes, they're actually a double nuke box where I overwintered two nukes together and this allowed them to keep each other warm. And I went with two, it was where I had a 10 frame hive body and I put it into five in the bottom and five on the top and they had different inner covers and uh, common telescoping covers. Anyway, that's what that is. I can hear it sizzling. I don't know that I want it sizzling. It's slowly melting, it's pretty, it's pretty warm. Once it gets all to be wax, I'm gonna turn it down and probably could even turn it off and while I'm working. 750. I'm loving it, man. What a bargain. But there's a lot of work to be done. I'm hoping to get this all cleaned and back to where it goes. And I'm not going to get it all done tonight. I know that. But we'll get started. We're going to get it done. And it's going to be great. And then it'll be easier to get around over here. I've got some new, uh, new frames there. And I'm going to get that other box there. And I think that other one that's broken there, I'm going to use those for honey supers and it'll be fine if they can get in and out of that hole it'll help them get the nectar in quicker and uh it won't be something that's going to be overwintered and where it's getting cold through there but i can use it for us for a honey super the next piece of the project is i'm working on this board it's kind of like you know a dish drying rack or whatever um but i'm just taking two inch screws i have some inch and a half screws also i might have to switch over to those um, I might run out, but this is, uh, this is a plastic foundation from a deep super or a deep box. And I'm doing these screws three quarters of an inch apart. So once I dip this in the wax and bring it out, shake it off, I can come over here and set it between these screws. And then the next one I can set between these screws and so on. And I probably could do closer than three quarters of an inch, but it might make it harder for me to get them in between. I think that'll be, with the heads, I think that'll be too close. So I'm gonna go three quarters of an inch all the way down this, and you can do it however you want to if you're gonna follow my lead on this. Um, but I'm gonna do three quarters of an inch, and uh, pretty much I have this uh, entrance reducer here um, and it's three quarters of an inch. So I'm just going to take it down through and mark a line and, you know, continue down, down, down. If I get done with that, I'm going to put screws all the way down through. I have some of these frames. Can you hear that? It's the cocoons or the chrysalis or whatever it's called. Up here, it's clean, but there's no wax. Same over here. So I'm taking this and I'm scrubbing the heck out of them. And it's cleaning a lot of that out of there. And I'm hoping that once the wax goes over top of it, it'll get a good hold and it'll It'll, it'll cover that up. It's got some like pollen in the bottom and, a, and some of the old wax, but it's pretty good. I'm trying to give it the best chance of, uh, of working. You can see remnants of wax moth here. Their trail of terror. Again, it's got some of that leftover in there, so just clean it off. Better. Here's our our frames without the foundation. 
and where is it? I got this paint scraper here, and I'm just going down through, kind of hitting the rails. Outside too. But anywhere. Normally. Here's the rails. Pop this off of there. And then go ahead and run the knife through this area. This is where your foundation is going to hook in. And so, and you can see that that's like old, dead wax moth larva from last winter died off or whatever. But you want to get it, try to get it cleaned out. So we got that all cleaned off and it's ready. Ready for the new foundation. Taking the foundation out. Once they're clean, I'm piling them there. The dirty ones I'm putting over here that I can scrape. And these are ones that need scraped completely. I've got a thing over here for that so I can melt that down and render it. This is all the frames after I've taken the foundation out. Once I scrape them, they're going in this one. And they'll be ready to fill. I also need to go through and scrape the boxes. Now it's it's springtime, right? This should have been done in the winter, but it's cold out here and I'm doing other things like hunting and such. So we did do a lot of it, but we didn't get it all done. And now it's time. Here are my uh, drying racks. And I don't know if you see, there's a difference now. I was starting to use screws, drywall screws. It takes a long time to put a lot of screws in, just a little bit. It's just, what I did is I took a, I don't know what size it was, eighth inch, something like that, drill bit, and I just ran down through there drilling. And I just slid these nails in. They didn't get pounded in, they just got pushed in. Um, and I actually, I put a piece of tape on the drill bit so I wouldn't go too deep in this one. I put every one of them through. <laughs> so the other one I didn't do so bad, but the tape I think pushed up on me and I shot them all through. Now this is how I'm doing this. I'll show you on a pretty clean one first. Now this wax has a little bit of stuff in it. I want to try to clean that out. Um, that's my fault. I told Joy, she was out here helping for a little while and I had some frames with a little bit of somewhat clean wax on them and I told her scrape it right in there it'll be good well some of the stuff that I told her to scrape in there wasn't as clean as I thought it was so I got some stuff floating around but this is how I'm doing it I'll try to get that stuff out of the way and some of it might be from the wax originally because maybe I only rendered it like once or twice I, I didn't get it completely clean so I'm putting this in just kind of Back and forth with it. Yeah, that wax isn't as clean as I thought it was. So I'm doing it that way and I'm getting that wax off. And you can see it's about three quarters of the way up and it's it's really packing it on. And then I'm gonna take this other side and dip it down to where I can see I didn't get to yet. And shake it off. And uh I should have used cleaner wax. I thought it was clean. I was wrong. And then, just take it over here. This is one that I had scraped off. And I pretty much uh, shut this down. I've got it right down to below 150. Kind of on warming. See that? I mean, it's backside man that's nice and full they should be able to just hammer this stuff out real good there we go I'm gonna just keep on going until uh, next June <laughs> I don't know how long it's gonna take me but so far so good I know I couldn't have uh, painted it on this quickly and it's getting really packed on there. So just going to keep going, fill these racks up and get all the other projects done. And I think it's going to be a couple of days of working on it here or there, but it's going to get finished and it's going to be great.
off camera, I poured the wax through my screens and got all that nasty stuff out of there. Now it's much cleaner. And this is what we're ending up with. So now, with my cleaned off frame and my newly waxed foundation, we're just gonna take these babies and get them where they're supposed to be. I'm trying to got all that wax on there, man. It's tough to get in. There we go. Wax on there. I might have to scrape them off a little bit just to get them where we want them. There we go. Oh yeah. That's looking great. So that's what we're looking for. We got about 500 to 550 frames to do. But I like it. There we go. Get them centered. That's one frame, 549 to go, or however many. I did notice, after I turned the heat off, one of the, it was starting to um, get solid a little bit, and one of the last ones that I did, it, start, it started to crack because it cooled so fast, it didn't warm up the plastic. The other ones, they're, they're doing fine. I thought maybe it was because these are the ones that I cleaned off, but I don't think that's the case. I think it's just because that wax was cooling off and it didn't get a chance to, to hold. So the bottom piece there is good, um, but it's right where the seam was where it joined. So I'm just going to re-dip that one. I've got all the ones that, all of the uh, plastic foundation that I have cleaned off. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and dip those now, and then I'm going to be done for the night um, doing this, and I'm just going to reconvene tomorrow. That's going to be the end of the video. I hope you enjoyed this process that I'm using. Uh, it's the first time actually that I've done it this way. I have uh, painted the wax on before and I've done some other things, but I think this is going to be a lot quicker for the amount that I have to do. If you've ever done it this way, down in the comments, let me know how it worked out for you. If, it's, uh, if you continue to do it this way all the time or if you've got a new method. If you haven't done it this way and you're thinking about doing it, let us know down below what you think. There's so many different ways to do everything for beekeeping. If you don't know that yet, now you do. Uh, everybody has their own ways and you try it one way and maybe you see somebody else do it a different way and then you try it that way. And So I hope you enjoyed the video. I uh, hope you keep coming back for more. I'll continue to put more bee stuff uh, up on the channel. And um, we really enjoy the bees and the work. It's, it's something that is uh, calming relaxing, helps you focus on things and helps you slow down a little bit and really uh, just try to hope that you're helping these guys or these girls out as much as possible and, and keeping them healthy and keeping them strong and helping them get through. So that's why I do it and I, I really enjoy it. And uh, if you're thinking about doing it, I suggest that you do. It's really, it's really, uh, an enjoyable hobby and I think that you can uh, learn so much from it. That's going to be all for today. I just want to thank you for swinging by. Hope you hit the, the like and uh, share the video and, and uh, subscribe to the channel. That would be awesome too. Hopefully you're enjoying what you see and you want to come see more. That's going to be it and we just want to let you know that we love you. That God loves you, and we will see you on the next video. See you later, and happy beekeeping. Bye. Everybody be careful when they're melting wax. I had this standing up on its side, and I was turned around the other way, scraping frames, these ones, 
and I heard splash, and I looked, and my my wheel flipped and splashed wax all over the place. Got to try to pull that wheel out of there, and uh, so it doesn't overflow anymore. Just be careful.